In this video, we're going to look at a box being pushed across a surface with friction, and the applied force is coming in at an angle, and we'll figure out how to find the acceleration here. In this problem, a 39 kilogram box starts out at rest on a horizontal surface with a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.22. A 260 Newton force is applied to the box at an angle of 30 degrees below the horizontal. And we want to know the acceleration of the box once it starts moving. When it says the force is angled at 30 degrees below the horizontal, just to be clear, what that means is if we were to place a line above the force, this angle is right here. So this is our 30 degree angle. This would also be the same angle as this angle here. So the first thing we'll do for this problem is draw a free body diagram. And then we're going to have to break up all of our forces into their x and y components. So if we have an x, y axis here, we have our applied force being pushed at an angle downward. So it's actually going to be this direction. And this is 30 degrees here. And of course, we have friction in this case, which is going to go against the motion. So the box is going to move in this direction, which means the friction is going to be pointing along the negative x-axis. So this is our friction force. And this force here, we'll call it Fa for the applied force. and then. Of course, we have mg, which is just the weight of the box. So weight. Then we have the normal force, which is just from the floor pressing upward on the box. This is our normal force. So now we have four different forces, and we want to break these up in x and y components. Luckily, our normal force and our weight are only along the y-axis, and friction is only along the x-axis but we do have our applied force, which has both an x and y component. So we'll just look at the sum of the forces on along the x-axis, which is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration, which is in the x-direction. Um, the acceleration is what we are actually solving for in this problem, but we will need to utilize the forces along the y-axis as well. So the forces in the y direction are going to be equal to zero since there is no acceleration along the y-axis. The box is not moving up or down. It's only moving left or right. The forces, our net forces, or some of our forces here along the x-axis, are going to be equal to, obviously, negative friction force. So that just goes in the negative direction. And then we have the x component of our applied force. So that's along here, Fax. And that is going to be positive. So that's going to be along the positive x-axis. And that is the magnitude of the applied force times cosine of theta. So cosine of the 30 degrees. So that's just because this x component here is adjacent to the angle, so we've got cosine of an angle equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which in our case is equal to the x component of the applied force over the hypotenuse of this triangle here, which is the magnitude of the applied force. So F A X equals F A times cosine of theta. And similarly, our Y component, F A Y, is going to equal the magnitude of the applied force at times the sine of theta. And that's because the sine of theta is equal to the opposite side of the triangle over the hypotenuse, which is going to be F Y X over Fa. So back to the sum of the forces over here. So this is the total of our forces along the x-axis, and this is equal to m 
a x. Now we it looks like we could just solve for the acceleration here, but we actually need to get the friction force. And in this case, the friction force is equal to mu times the normal force, but we don't know what the normal force is, so we need to find that using the y components. So that's going to be sum of our y components is equal to the normal force in the positive direction, the weight minus weight, which is going to be mg in the negative direction, and then we have the y component of the applied force as well. And that is going to be in the negative direction. This is our y component of a y. That's negative f a times the sine of the angle. And this is equal to zero, again, because there's no acceleration along the x-axis. But we can use this equation here to solve for the normal force by just adding mg and f a sine theta to the other side. So using this, we get that the normal force is going to be equal to mg plus f a sine of theta. So now we can plug this into our equation uh, where we have the friction force and then solve for the acceleration. So let's make some room. And now essentially what we're doing is taking this, plugging it in to the friction force, and then plugging that in to this equation. And then we're going to get mu times the normal force, which is mg plus fa sine of theta plus fa cosine of theta. And that's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. So now we just have to do some algebra and then plug in our values. Just moving things around here, we have ax is equal to we're just dividing both sides by m, so negative mu over m times mg plus fa sine of theta plus fa over m cosine of theta. And now we can go ahead and plug in all of the values for these variables. So it's going to be negative 0.22 over the mass, which was 39 kilograms, times mg. Now you could just distribute the mass through this, but I'm just keeping it as it is. So 39 kilograms times g, which of course is 9.8 meters per second squared, plus 260 newtons for the applied force, times the sine of 30 degrees, plus, again, 260 newtons divided by the mass, 39 kilograms, times the cosine of 30 degrees. And then very carefully putting that into your calculator, you'll get that the acceleration is going to be 2.9 meters per second squared. And so that's how you would find the acceleration when we have a problem like this it becomes a little bit more straightforward when the pushing force is only along the horizontal axis, then your normal force is just going to be mg. And then alternatively, sometimes you'll see problems where they have a pulling force instead of a pushing force, which would be in this direction. And you do have to account for the change in the normal force when you do this as well. But instead of our normal force having a plus fa sine theta, it would be negative. And that's because the addition of the force from pulling would be in the opposite direction as mg. But in our case, they're actually both in the same direction and both opposite of the normal force in this equation here. So hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if there's anything else you guys would like to see.